Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Natty and Sands. This of course is learn how to edit stuff. And did I bait you in with that video title? We'll see. Now look, I can guarantee, all right, that some of these tips and tricks in Adobe Premiere are gonna blow your mind. I can guarantee it. And if I don't blow your mind, your money back. This whole video came about because there's things that I do while I'm editing that are very second nature to me, almost like breathing. I'll just do something real quick and then someone would be like, wait, how did you, how did you do that? What did you just do? Bookmark this video so you can reference it later because today I'm gonna go through 12 things that I do subconsciously that almost every time I'm with somebody that doesn't know about it, they're shocked. Now I'm gonna move through this pretty quick today, all right? We're not gonna do any long drawn out explanations of what it is or how it works. You guys should understand the basic functionality of all of these tips and tricks. It saves a tremendous amount of time while you're editing and it actually just makes your workflow processes much smoother. I'm doing a lot of hand movements. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Open up Adobe Premiere if you want to, but you don't have to because we're gonna be going through it quick. We're getting started right now. All right, I've got Premiere open and down here on my timeline is a wedding highlight video that I did for my one year anniversary. That has nothing to do with this tutorial. I'm just using this project template to show you everything we're gonna be talking about today. So the first thing that I always do that people are kind of mind blown by, they don't know that how to do it or they ask a lot, is duplicating a clip. So on your timeline, if you have a clip, if you hold down alt and click and drag, you will duplicate the clip on top of itself or wherever you really wanna put it. So you can just make multiple duplicates of clips on your timeline, just simply by holding down alt and clicking and dragging. So that is one thing that I do all the time that people are kinda of like, how'd you do that? Did you know if you hit A on the keyboard like this, your arrow will turn into two little arrows that are facing towards the right. And if you click anywhere on your timeline, it will select everything to the right of where those arrows are lining up. So if I come over here, it will select everything to the right of where I click. And you can keep doing that down the timeline. Now, why is this useful? Well, if I wanted to grab this giant chunk right here, I can hit V to go back to my selection tool and just move everything over. And if you have locked tracks, those tracks will not move. But basically, you can create a giant space for yourself if you need to move stuff around on your timeline. And then you could also ripple delete, which is another one. Uh, you can set that in your hotkeys. Mine's just the little delete key, but now that I've made all this space, boom, I'm gonna cover that space back again by ripple deleting. So that's the regular A tool, all right? A to select everything to the right. If you hit shift in A, you can select everything behind the clip as well. So you can select everything to the left and to the right by hitting A or shift A respectively. Now we covered two different things inside that one tip, all right? It was A to select and then ripple delete. Those are two things, take it or leave it, however you wanna do it. All right, this next one I use every single day for every single project, if you have a clip on your timeline and you click it and you hit F on the keyboard, it will take that source clip and put it up in your source monitor, which will allow you to kind of scrub through the rest of the clip. And if you wanted to add more down to the timeline from the same clip, you can now set a new in and out point and just drag that down onto the timeline. And you can keep doing that over and over again if you know you have a really long extended clip. So this just saves a lot of time because now I don't have to come over here, go to footage, try to find where all of that stuff is and I don't have to search through my project which takes a tremendous amount of time. All I do is simply click on the clip on the timeline, hit F on the keyboard and it brings me the in and out point exactly where I selected. And this will work for everything. You just have to make sure that your playhead is over the clip that you're trying to find more footage of and that's the way that it's gonna work. Now guys, I'm gonna take it a step further, okay? If you double click on a clip in the timeline it will bring up that same clip with in and out points in your source monitor. And if you zoom out here, grab these in and out points with the hand tool and you can click and drag and you can go to a completely different part of the clip. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna replace it right down here on your timeline. So I'm gonna let it go right here. And now all of a sudden you see my photographer there and she's adjusting Jillian's dress. And I've just replaced one for one that clip that was there before with a different part of the clip here just by double clicking and moving the in and out points. I'm gonna control Z just to go back to the original clip but that is a very, very amazing time-saving tool for you guys. Now you can do that same thing with the toolbar on the side of your timeline. On the left-hand side, it is called the slip tool. If we click on that, which I believe is this guy right here, slip tool. Now I can just click and drag right on that clip itself and it will bring up the same kind of dialogue that you're used to seeing. The only thing that kind of sucks about this is like you can't really go too far. Like I'm hitting the edge of my screen so I can only really go back to that point or the edge of my screen over here, I can really only go back to that point. So this is a little janky. Uh, my preferred method of using it is double clicking so I can actually have complete reign over the duration of the entire clip and not be limited by my screen size. All right, so here's a fun one. You can drag and drop clips onto your timeline and insert it before, after, on top, or whatever, but you don't actually have to drag it to the timeline. What you can do is drag it right here from the source window straight over to the program window, and it will show up with this overlay of things that you probably have never seen before, but all of these tools are insanely useful. If you've never tried to do this, this is really great. So what I can do is I can insert this new clip before the clip on my timeline right there. Control Z, and I'm gonna insert after, and notice that it puts it after the clip, even though my playhead was at the beginning of 
this clip. So that's kind of a cool thing. And this will also work if you have your playhead in the middle of a clip. I can insert it before, and it is smart enough to know that it's doing it before or after. But if you guys drag and drop this right on insert, it will split the clip right in the middle. So just be careful on which one you're choosing for this because you don't want to end up like cutting a clip that you don't want to be cut. Some of the other ones, overlay, we'll just put it up on top on your topmost layer. So it will just throw it down on your timeline up near the top. And the other one, which is replace, it will one for one replace the shot on your timeline with the new shot, but it will retain the speed and everything. So this is kind of nice if you're working with a bunch of footage that is high frame rate, you can just one for one drag and drop and it will retain the speed duration properties that you've already manipulated on your timeline. Kind of a cool thing, a little bit niche, but nonetheless mind blowing. Hopefully, I don't, the whole point. Of, <laughs> and last but not least, we have overwrite, which will basically put the clip segmented in the middle. It won't actually split the clip evenly. It will just overwrite that portion of the clip for the duration that you have set by your in and out. So this is a very useful tool, uh, maybe something that you guys didn't know about, but definitely experiment with this and, and have a little bit of fun. All right, we're moving on to the roll edit tool. On your timeline, it is N on the keyboard. And what the roll edit tool will do is it allows you to change the duration of two clips simultaneously. So some of you may click this clip and drag it over here and then drag it over here to extend. And that takes a lot of time and a lot of clicks if you count compound it over the time of an edit. But with the roll tool, if you just hit N on your keyboard, you can do that exact same movement by clicking and dragging one time. So you're saving yourself a lot of time. You're saving yourself the headache of clicking and then dragging and then dragging and like doing all this stuff. Just hit N on the keyboard and you can roll edit two clips more or less. All right, moving on. Have you ever wanted to mute or unmute or lock and unlock all tracks at the same time and you find yourself clicking and clicking and clicking? No, what are you doing? Don't click everything individually. Here's the shortcut, all right? All you're gonna do is hold shift and click once and it will mute all of the video tracks. Again, hold shift, click once, unmute. Hold shift, click once, it will lock all of the video tracks. Hold shift, click once. Same thing with the audio. You can do this with everything over here on this left-hand side by just simply holding shift and clicking once to mute all, shift, click once to unmute all. That is a huge time saver for those of you that are locking tracks or unmuting and muting and all that stuff. Did you know you could do that? Did you? Drop a comment in the comment section below if you knew you could do that. Hmm. All right, here's a great one. If you click on an audio clip and you wanna raise the volume of that audio clip, some of you are maybe grabbing this volume slider and you're sliding it up and down and you're being really nitpicky. No! There's a shortcut for that. I'm gonna expand this audio clip so you can exactly see what I'm talking about. But if you click on an audio track and you hit the left and right brackets, it will lower the volume of that audio track by one decibel every time you hit that bracket key. So right now I'm hitting the left bracket to go down and the right bracket to go up. And every time you hit that bracket key, it is raising or lowering the audio track by one decibel. Save a lot of time and be more precise. All right, moving on because we're killing it, everyone. Say you wanna make all of your video tracks bigger, all of them simultaneously. Well, are you gonna click and drag every single one to raise the, no, you're not gonna do that. Come over here to the left-hand side where all your video and audio tracks live and you're gonna hold down shift and you're gonna use the mouse wheel and that will expand or collapse all of your audio or video tracks simultaneously. This is a huge time saving function for those of you that want to get in here and like really access some of the video clips and click on this little effects icon and do stuff in here, but then you don't want to raise it individually, shift and mouse wheel. All right, here's another good one if you don't know about it. Say you wanna just go from clip to clip at the start and end with your playhead on any selected track. Well, how do you do that? Are you guys clicking and dragging and then going like this to all of your clips? No, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit up and down on the arrow keys. And what that's gonna do is it's going to go to the beginning and the end of every clip on your timeline with that track selected. Now, if you don't want all the tracks to be selected, shift, click on them, and I'm just gonna select video track one. And now with my arrow keys, what it's gonna do is it's only gonna go to clips that are on my video track one, and it's going to skip everything else above it. So if I just wanna to go to the beginning and end of clips on video one, now I can just hit the up and down arrow keys and it will skip all the other numbered video tracks and just focus on video one. But if you wanna be able to navigate your timeline quickly from clip to clip, the up and down arrow keys, and you can also select all the video tracks to do this as well. But that can get a little bit cumbersome if you have too many little cuts on all of your tracks. This can be a little bit of a pain in the ass, but it actually works really nice if you're just trying to move quickly. All right, yet another time-saving function. If you click on any clip on your timeline and you hold down Alt and use the up and down arrow keys, you can move that video track all the way up and all the way down respectively just by clicking and using the arrow keys and it will move it in place. You're gonna guarantee that it doesn't go left and right to mess up your timing, but you're just making vertical room to maybe put stuff underneath that video track here. And this is just a nice, easy way to keep everything simple. Now, there is a downside to doing this, as convenient as it is. If you come down here and you move a video track accidentally too far and then you go up again, 
it has now deleted the clip that was previously underneath it. And there's no way of getting that back unless you undo twice. And if you do this without knowing, you can't undo enough. And then that clip is gone forever. And you've just made a very, very grave mistake. But if you're making sure that you're being careful, this is a nice convenient way to kind of just navigate clips around your timeline. And this also works for audio as well. But the con also applies to the audio track. So I can click and I can move this around on these tracks. But if I go down too low, it will delete the track that's there. And then now you're kind of screwed. All right, last but not least, I've covered this in a previous video, but I'm gonna cover it again here because it is amazing. It is master video channel effects. So what I'm gonna do first is just duplicate this onto my timeline to show you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm gonna open up the color tab. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna color grade this clip really, really fast by just throwing a LUT on it under basic correction. I'm gonna throw a Rec 709 LUT on it. And now I've color graded this clip. But since I've duplicated that same clip, I also want this clip to be color graded. But look, it's not. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna click on this clip. I'm gonna come over here to the Lumetri color. I'm gonna copy it. Then I'm gonna click on this clip. And I'm gonna hit paste. And maybe some of you will copy and paste attributes, which saves a little bit of time. But you know what saves the most time is master video channel effects, mainly for color grading for me, but it works for pretty much everything. Check this out. I'm gonna delete that clip. I'm also gonna delete the Lumetri color off of this clip. And I am going to duplicate this a bunch of times, okay? This is so not what anybody would do, but this is just for the effect. Okay, here we go. What I'm gonna do is click on my clip that I want to color grade, come right up here to where it says master, click on that, and I'm going to now drop the LUT on the master, which is going to affect every instance of that clip on the timeline, wherever it appears. Now this is really good for doing interviews or anything like that where you have really long clips that you need everything to be uniformly color graded. And it's indicated by this little red line underneath the effects icon. So now every time that clip appears on the timeline, it will copy and paste the same color grade onto it automatically without me having to do anything. And this saves a lot of time. So if I click on this clip, come up here to master to adjust it, and I'm gonna cool everything off aggressively. Now everything on my timeline is gonna be cooled off aggressively. And this is gonna guarantee that you don't make any mistakes color grading. If you're copying and pasting a grade or any effect onto multiple clips, this is just gonna make sure that you keep everything consistent and it saves so much time. I hope you guys understand the importance of doing this uh, because this is something that I use every single day for the work that I do professionally and even personally, if I want to affect every on the timeline that I've already been using. Okay, now I want you to think back to the beginning of this video to where we are now. Did any of the things that I covered today blow your mind? Think about it. Did it? If yes, why don't you go ahead and smash that mother thumbs up button because we did it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I truly hope that one of these things blew your mind today and you're gonna take it and run with it and incorporate it into your workflow. That would make me so happy. Again, if you wanna bookmark this video, throw it in your favorites on YouTube, whatever, so you can access it quickly just in case you forget one of the many valuable things that we talked about today, go ahead and do that. Also, last chance to get the Learn How to Edit Stuff merch from the store, which is this render design and a few other designs. So links that are in the video description below for you to go and cop them while they're still around. They're not gonna be around for very much longer. As always, Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and also check out the last video that you missed. We do them here weekly at Learn How to Edit Stuff. Drop me a line at Naughty and Sands on social if you have a tutorial that you want me to do for you. Subscribe, check out the last video. I'm gonna go drink more coffee, which is not a good idea, but I will see you guys next time.